Faculty is a movie that blends science fiction and horror. Released in the late 90s, delving into the typical confusion and rebellion of school life while introducing an alien invasion. Directed by Robert Rodriguez and written by Kevin Williamson, the film combines the suspense of a classic silent alien invasion with the dynamics of teenage drama, standing out with a unique premise of what would happen if your teachers were from another planet. Set in the seemingly mundane Harrington High School in Ohio, the story unfolds with a group of students discovering the chilling secret that their faculty members are not what they seem to be. With a cast that includes Josh Hartnett, Elijah Wood, and Salma Hayek, among others, the faculty offers a mix of thrilling scares, compelling characters, and a small dose of humor. This film captivates with its elements of horror and science fiction, but also resonates through its exploration of themes such as identity, belonging, and rebellion. As the students unite to face the alien threat, they go through personal challenges and societal expectations, making The Faculty a memorable film that explores the depth of human resilience and the power of unity in the face of otherworldly dangers. The story begins on a fateful night at Harrington High School in Ohio. After a school budget meeting, Principal Drake returns inside the building to pick up some forgotten keys. She encounters an erratic Coach Willis who attacks her, leading to a distressing sequence where Drake defends herself and barely escapes, only to be betrayed by the drama teacher, Mrs. Olson, who reveals a sinister alliance with Willis. The narrative then shifts to introduce the main student characters the next day. These include Casey Connor, a diligent but bullied school photographer. He, along with the school newspaper editor and cheerleading captain, Delilah Prophet, and others navigate high school dramas. Delilah's boyfriend, Stan Rosado, contemplates a life beyond football, while Zeke Tyler is a senior repeating his school year and involved with illegal substances, attracting the concern of Miss Elizabeth Burke. The newcomer, Mary Beth Hutchinson, tries to connect with Stokely Mitchell, a self-proclaimed outcast. Casey's discovery of a peculiar creature triggers a series of eerie events, leading to the realization that the school is under alien influence. As suspicions grow, Casey convinces his peers of the alien invasion, leading to a tense confrontation with Professor Furlong, who is then neutralized by Zeke's unconventional methods. The group's quest for survival intensifies as they uncover the truth and devise a plan to eliminate the alien queen, mistakenly believing Principal Drake to be the culprit. Amidst the chaos, Mary Beth reveals her true identity as the alien queen, setting the stage for a final showdown that tests the group's resolve and ingenuity. The denouement sees a return to normalcy for the survivors, with flourishing relationships and evident personal growth. The school and its inhabitants recover, but not without the scars and memories of their trauma as they move forward, forever changed by the events. What are these alien creatures? Submerged in the depths of an aquatic existence, the aliens in this movie represent a formidable force, seamlessly bridging the gap between life in water and on land. With a sophisticated hierarchy reminiscent of insect colonies, these creatures are led by queens. These regal beings are not only physically imposing, but are also telepathically connected to their progeny, maintaining a bond so strong that the death of a queen means doom for all her offspring. At first glance, these extraterrestrial beings might seem like the harmless fish or tadpoles found in Earth's waters, equipped with tentacles and threatening jaws. Their mouths are armed with multiple sharp teeth. But the queens, in contrast, tower over their offspring with their monstrous forms, a marked contrast to the deceptive simplicity of their offspring. These aliens boast a range of abilities that belie their simple appearance. They possess the terrifying ability to hijack human bodies, slipping into the ears to reach the brain and taking control of the host's will while retaining their memories. This body invasion transforms the host's personality, turning timid individuals into bold ones and the rash into empathetic ones. Along with this chilling ability, they can replicate endlessly, change shape in a limited way, and boast almost immortal resilience capable of regenerating from serious wounds and even rejoining amputated limbs, including the head. The queens, however, are the pinnacle of these aliens' evolution. Their powers eclipse those of their offspring, 
with unparalleled shape-shifting abilities, including mimicking the human form and adjusting their size at will. Their strength is unparalleled, a testament to their dominance within the alien hierarchy. However, despite all their strength and abilities, these aliens harbor certain vulnerabilities. Their aquatic nature demands constant hydration, a need that becomes their Achilles heel on dry land. Diuretic substances represent a lethal threat to them, exploiting their need for water. But their most critical weakness is their psychic link with their queen, since her death ensures the extinction of their colony. Originating from a planet with vast oceans, the aliens faced extinction as their homeworld began to wither. Among them, a queen who would later be known as Mary Beth took the bold decision to seek refuge on Earth, specifically targeting a small Ohio town called Harrington as ground zero for her invasive campaign. Disguised as an exchange student, Mary Beth infiltrated Harrington High School, quickly integrating into the student body. Her mission was clear, to propagate her species under her human facade, starting with the unsuspecting Coach Willis. As the infection spreads, Mary Beth astutely navigates the social landscape of the high school, her interactions with students like Zeke and Stokes, hinting at a complexity beyond mere survival. However, as the true nature of the aliens comes to light, a group of uninfected students bands together against the extraterrestrial threat. Through ingenuity and courage, they discover the aliens' Achilles' heel and devise a plan to thwart Mary Beth's conquest. In a climactic confrontation, the students' resilience and Mary Beth's cunning collide, leading to an unexpected outcome that challenges the notion of victory and defeat. Mary Beth, despite her seemingly nefarious intentions, embodies a tragic figure driven by desperation to save her dying race. Her defeat, while ensuring Earth's safety, ironically brings positive changes for those who oppose her. In this complex tale of survival, betrayal, and redemption, the lines between heroes and villains blur, leaving a lasting impact on the lives of all characters involved. The Queen speaks of her homeworld, once brimming with boundless oceans, painting the picture of a paradise lost to environmental degradation. This story portrays her not as a malevolent invader, but as a refugee fleeing a dying planet. Her narrative effortlessly shifts from survival to a mission of transformation, suggesting the intention to recreate her lost world on Earth. Her observation when she says that all of you were lost and lonely just like me hints at a perception of kinship with humans, particularly those marginalized or alienated by their peers. Her vision for Earth, a world without anger, without fear, and without bad attitudes, resonates with utopian ideals, promising an existence where social pressures and personal insecurities no longer dictate one's worth. She imagines a world where every individual, regardless of social standing, can thrive and be accepted. This perspective reveals a longing to belong and heal, to offer sanctuary not just for herself but for all who feel excluded. However, beneath this veneer of benevolence, there is undeniable manipulation. Her offer to Casey to be part of something so special, so perfect, and free of fears is simultaneously an invitation and a hidden threat. This being embodies the seductive lure of conformity, the charm of shedding burdens in exchange for a place in a harmonious collective. But it also underscores the loss of individuality, the erasure of the unique struggles and triumphs that define the human experience. In conclusion, the Queen's monologue at the end of the movie presents her as a character driven by a mix of desperation, empathy, and a distorted sense of salvation. Her intentions, though possibly noble in their aim to eradicate suffering, overlook the intrinsic value of human diversity and the freedom to choose one's path. Her ultimate defeat serves as a testament to the resilience of the human spirit and the profound strength found in facing life's adversities rather than escaping them. Through this lens, the queen emerges not only as an enemy to be overcome, but as a tragic figure embodying the dangerous allure of a false utopia and the desperation to save her species. Hey, don't go just yet. If you enjoyed my video, I'd love to recommend another one for you to watch.